Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Michael Hart. Thank you so much for joining us for our video today. We're going to do something really cool. I don't think many of you know that for the last few years, Microsoft has been developing a lot of free educational technology tools that are or can be extremely helpful for our students and others with learning differences. So I wanted to actually do a series of interviews with my guest today. Uh, I'll introduce in a second. And I hope that many of you will find it very useful and uh, open your eyes to a lot of stuff that, that Microsoft's doing that I think is really, really valuable. So I'm very pleased to have my guest, Rachel Berger, here today, my friend and colleague. She wears a couple of hats like a lot of us do. Uh, first and foremost, she's president and executive director of Decoding Dyslexia for the state of Minnesota. Uh, Decoding Dyslexia essentially is a parent-driven organization for um, supporting parents and teachers and others in the dyslexia community find resources, learn about things, and um, support each other, basically. And she's also relevant to today's discussion. She's also a Microsoft Dyslexia and Learning Disabilities Community Consultant, and she's going to tell you all about that. So, Rachel, welcome, first of all. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. Now, why don't we just take one or two minutes to get a little bit of background on the history of Microsoft and EdTech tools and then how you got involved with them. Great. So, um, in 2015, Microsoft hosted one of their um, annual global hackathons. This is something they do every year company-wide. And um, it's a time, it's one week out of the year when um, people can work with one another, anyone they choose on any technology they like, um, to, try to try to essentially develop something new. Um, and so in 2015, a group of people came together, um, reading, font, accessibility experts um, came together in the education space to try to look at the latest science and technology um, and research around dyslexia, specifically because dyslexia impacts such a large percentage of the population's ability to read printed word, which as you know, then impacts um, those individuals' ability in school um, and, and to further their education and also find meaningful life's work. So um, they looked at those things and worked on some technology that would support dyslexics for a week. They built those into OneNote, as I'll show you later, and they actually won the hackathon that year. And so um, that's a little bit of the background. Um, that background is also being driven by their newish CEO, Satya Nadella, mm -hmm. and his mission within Microsoft to um, empower every single person on the planet. And when you think about that, they're not saying 75% of the population or 82% of the population, they're saying every single person on the planet um, of all abilities. And so this is a great time for um, communities like ours um, to um, benefit from these technologies. That's very really cool. Show you those things. And how did uh, you get involved? And how I got involved was uh, a few years back, I was working with a Microsoft partner, a Swedish company who um, developed an innovative technology to screen students early for dyslexia. And um, Someone from Microsoft gave us a demonstration of these new technology tools, and I was immediately smitten and essentially um, <laughs> wanted, to, wanted to know how I could be involved in, in bringing awareness to, to our community um, and essentially evangelizing these tools. So uh, long story short, I, I hopped on board and am, am uh, evangelizing the use of assistive technology um, to be integrated into supporting our students in their educational environments. Hmm, that's a great fit, man. That's very, very cool. So today, we're going to focus on one tool called Dictation, which is essentially speech to text, right? Correct. And you're going to, it's embedded in uh, Word, OneNote, uh, PowerPoint, and Outlook, I think. Is that correct? correct? Correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a live demo of what this looks like. And we're going to start by asking you to take over the screen. And I think the first thing you're going to do is walk through the exact steps of how someone downloads and integrates the tool with Office, correct? Correct. 
Yep. Okay, great. So yeah. take charge when you're ready. Share. And let's go to the... Um, okay, so first I'm going to share with you how to get dictation. So it's a download. It's free and it's quick. And once you download it, as, as Dr. Hart said, it will be in Word desktop. It'll be in Outlook email and it'll be in your PowerPoint. It's automatically embedded into um, uh, Word Online, which is the free online version, and into OneNote Notebook. So you don't have to download it in those, but on Word Desktop, you're going to do a download. It's quick. It's easy. Um, the web site is dictate.ms, and then your screen will look like this. And you'll download either for the 32-bit or below here, you'll look at downloading for the 64-bit. Um, so then once you do that, I would recommend and then restarting it. Okay, so now I'm going to move over to um, Word. Has, uh, is my screen sharing or do I need to reshare that, Dr. Hart? Uh, your screen is perfectly sharing right now, awesome. but let's see if you could move to Word or whether we need to. No, I am, I am in Word, so let me see yeah. if I need to go specifically to reshare that. There we okay. go. So we should be looking at Microsoft Word. Again, this is Word Desktop. And what we see here is a document that I have um, pulled up. And we're going to see how dictation works here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go under the dictation button and I'm going to click on start. And it says start speaking. So I can go ahead and start speaking clearly, concisely, whatever I wanna say is going to be picked up. And then when I push stop, and then when I push stop, it's gonna stop. And you can see that it also auto punctuates. So um, right here, I'll highlight what we just did. Um, really easy to pick up my text auto punctuated and um, just like with, you know, just a, it was a snap to do this. I can also say that I have um, done this in a busy exhibition hall. And um, a lot of times there, you know, we have students that will ask us, so is this gonna work in the classroom, in a noisy classroom? And the answer is yes. I've done this in a busy exhibition hall where there are a lot of voice and a lot of sound. The technology is created in a way that it's, it's um, focusing and honing in on the voice that's closest to it. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, naturally, there might be a few errors if you're in a loud place, it'll not pick up a couple other things, but really it does an amazing job. Very similar to the iPhone. And Man, so I gotta, gonna... to, excuse me, I'm gonna interrupt you. When you first showed me this, I was so shocked by the speed and the accuracy and the uh, punctuation. It was like, this is like a, a quantum leap above what we just had a few years ago. I mean, I can, uh, I wish I had it when I was practicing. <laughs> Isn't it just amazing? And the thing that I like is you don't have to train it. Number one, yeah. you don't have to pay for it. Number two, you don't have to train it. Um, yeah. I used to be a subscriber um, or what I call donor to another um, software that, uh, you know, enables you to use dictation. And I, I call it donor because I, I trained it a number of times and then decided it wasn't effective for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so right. I really wanted something that was like my iPhone and finally we have it. And this is something that I use every single day. Um, so I'm going to show you how my son uses it. So those of you, um, you know, educators or students can can see just what a difference it makes in someone's lives or life. So my son, whoops, learning curve here, Rachel. I have to go and reshare where I moved to. Okay, so you should be looking at OneNote Notebook. Yep. And an example of handwriting. So this is my son's handwriting. It's in language arts assignment. Um, it's about, about a year old. He was in sixth grade and the assignment was to write a one-page story and he certainly did write a one-page story. But you can see here in the middle, he got really <laughs> large and at the end, again, very big, the end. Um, for him as a dyslexic student, the um, 
you know, the struggle he has with dyslexia, but also with dysgraphia makes writing very difficult. So he's got, you know, spelling, that's a problem. He's got the manual task of writing, that's a problem. And when those things are factored in, you know, um, he has a difficult time sequencing, his richness and his content are affected. And so it's just, it's just a whole nother story versus if someone was to sit down and ask him verbally, um, well, tell me a story. So, um, it's very common for a student with learning disabilities. Um, what he's thinking in his head and would, would be able to clearly articulate is gonna look completely different when it is written down on paper. And so um, this took him one hour of his special ed class time. And uh, he, he thought this was you know, a, an example of good work and was ready to turn it in. And as a parent, I was a little bit saddened because it's not um, representative of what's in his head and in his intellectual um, capacity either. So um, I gave him dictation and I'm gonna show you what the final product was. Now obviously it's legible here, but the big difference is in the sentences. You can see the first sentence here, Big Mackey D, the alien time traveler, set his time machine to 1878 before the Minneapolis, Minnesota, Washburn, A. Mill flower explosion. That is a lot of detail. That's, first, a, that's incredible. I know. His first sentence here is Big Mackie D said his time machine, 1950s crack boom. So he knew he wanted to get to the 1950s. And this is kind of told via um, a little bit of a back to the future spin for those of you that remember that film. Um, so he knew he wanted the guy to land in the 1950s, but what he couldn't get out and articulate before, again, due to sequencing and things, was, was who is this guy? Where, you know, where is he setting his time machine? And, and there's just a level of detail. So again, we used dictation, and the beautiful thing about dictation in, in enabling a student with that is, again, I'm going to move over to the um, to word again here. Yep. And the beauty of that tool is for someone who struggles to um, demonstrate their thoughts via writing, we have removed that roadblock and given them the simple ability to do what my son and I call a brain download. So he just can put the content out on the paper. And then after that, the really neat um, capability here is that yes, you can use dictation and do a download of information and content. But then you can go under the review tab and use the read aloud function after that. So let's move this cursor down to what I might want read. And so we can have it played back to us what, what we had written using the read aloud feature. Unfortunately, though deforestation is now widely discussed, the systematic deforestation of the rainforest has increased. So over here, you'll see on the right, I'm using pause, play, skip ahead, and skip back. And then I've got some settings here for reading speed and voice selection. So it was a unique combination of both of those tools, dictation and then read aloud. So he could toggle between those and have those things read aloud to him um, after he dictated to help him to be able to more clearly and effectively create content. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously the proof is in the detail and his work. So yeah. his finished product only took him 12 minutes compared to the handwritten product that was an hour. My goodness. You know, I was going to ask you for the takeaway, but I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, so I've been, a, I've been a psychologist for almost 30 years now, and I've specialized in kids with learning differences and you know, I've evolved as the technology has evolved. And I, I always say that uh, things like this that Microsoft is doing is a very, I mean, educational technology is a revolution, but educational technology for kids with learning differences is a very specific revolution. And it is, frankly, in my career, the most important thing that's ever happened for our kids. And so I am really, really grateful that you um, are going to do this series with me because I think it's really important to get the word out because it will really have such an impact on, you know, millions and millions of people all over the world. So, you know, I really want to thank you. Thank you for your time today. And I'm really looking forward to uh, our next uh, foray. And um, I'll make sure to get that out as far and as wide as I can when that time comes. So thank you very much for coming today.
Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited to share these tools with everyone.